Um, all right. Animosity towards my fiance. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here comes somebody maybe needs to pull the plug there. First off, let's sit, set things straight here. All right. You are the funniest comedian out there. I like this person. Nothing but compliments. Not holding me accountable for my actions. Nothing but, you know, praise. Now, let me get off your nuts because I know people tell you this all the time. Um, doesn't mean I don't like to hear it, so thank you. I have, a, I have a life story to tell you about. Let's see how this goes. I've been with my girl now since November 2018. You're a pilot. Do the math. All right, well, it's two and a half years. I mean, I don't think that has anything to do with flying a plane. Uh, rewind it September 1st, 2018. My father passed away. Sorry to hear that. I'm a wreck. My girl at the time, who I was with for six years, who I adored, loved, never cheated on, treated her like a queen. I thought she was. Leaves me a month after my dad dies. Oh, dude, that means she wanted to dump you before, and then she was just like, fuck, his dad died. Now I got to hang around for another month. God damn it. Uh, it was a blessing in disguise because she was one of those girls that liked, that liked to hit. Oh, yeah. My wife used to be like that. She used to fucking throw shit and punch me. This lunatic. She used to call it, I'm passionate. Uh, she was a narcissist, controlling as hell, also found out she cheated on me. Oh, Jesus, you fucking dodged a bullet there, sir. So now I'm a double wreck, feeling lost and heartbroken at this point. Hey, I have feelings, fucker. This is typical guys. Like, he, I'm feeling heartbroken. He couldn't just say that. He had, to, he had to throw a fuck you across the bow to keep me at bay here. Uh, not even a week later, this amazing woman. Amazing! All capital letters. Woman just falls into my lap. So what do I do? Uh, after all her, yeah, yeah, bullshit. What does she do? I tell her I'm not ready for a relationship. I tell her that she's a good woman and she doesn't deserve how I'm going to treat her. Parentheses like shit. I told her I know how I am and I don't want to treat her horribly just because my last relationship ended so wrong. Well, that was a mature thing to know about yourself. Uh, I wasn't ready. You know, the dust must settle and the debris must be thrown out from the wreckage of the last relationship. Yes. Uh, my girl now insisted on staying with me to help me go. No, oh, my girl now, this woman, same person, insisted on staying with me to help me go through my tough time. I didn't want her to. I wanted to be myself, constantly trying to push her away. I wanted time to focus on me. That didn't happen. Valentine's Day came around. I tried to break up with her that night. But when I told her we couldn't see one another, the waterworks came and I gave in to the tears and she got her way. Now, fast forward about a year. We have a beautiful baby girl together. Oh, my goodness. January 25th, 2020. Congratulations, I hope. Uh, we're a family, as we should be. We plan on getting married in September 2021. Where is the problem? Uh, I feel animosity towards my fiance for never giving me the chance to breathe. I haven't been able to mentally place myself into this relationship I feel like I used all my good energy on the wrong person in my last relationship. Now we're, now we're getting married with a little girl, and I still feel the same. It's not fair for such an amazing woman like her to be with a damaged man like myself. I want to get back to normal and be able to mentally check into this relationship finally. I'm questioning getting married right now. I'm so confused and still feel lost. Any advice would be wonderful. Go fuck yourself. Um... All right. Um, I don't think you, you're holding yourself accountable for your actions here. All right. You knew from day one you didn't want to be with this woman and you needed your space. All right. And you keep blaming her like she pulled you in, like you didn't have the power to say no. You broke up with her on the evening of Valentine's Day. All right. She starts crying. And rather than sticking to your guns, you stayed into it. And now you have a kid with her. So what I would do if I was you is stop blaming her and feeling resentment towards her. You should actually be questioning what is wrong with you that you didn't want to be in something, you got into it, and now you're, you have a kid and you're going to get married. You need to go to therapy is what I would do. I would go to therapy and be like, hey, tell her what him or her you're talking to, what you just did, and try to figure out why you do that stuff rather than blaming this woman who you say is an amazing woman who, you know, you have a kid with. 
Um, but to give you something positive here, you know, in case you think I'm coming down on you, um, this is a part of life. A part of life is blaming other people for decisions that you made until one day you hold yourself accountable. Of like, what am I contributing to this situation? You know, why, what happened to me that made me when a woman cried, give in. And most guys do give in when that happens. Um, I've done both. And I'll tell you, it never works out either way. <laughs> I've called him on. Really? You're going to cry about this? How old are you? That, that never ends well. You're so cold. Police caught me with the prostitute. What's up, Bill? A big fan of yours. I enjoy your all. I enjoy your all your stand-ups. Okay, I'm going to say this is a first draft. Your Netflix originals, especially efforts for family. Thank you. And your interviews on YouTube. Mostly the ones on Conan. I'm 28 years old, single, no kids, live alone, kind of a loner. I smoke weed. I work midnight at a gas station. All right, let's do this again. 28 years old, single, no kids, I live alone, kind of a loner. I smoke weed. I work midnight at a gas station. I never go out. I don't drink. I don't do any kind of clubs or hardcore drugs. I just get horny. I usually have girls, but not this time talking to somehow i managed to be rude by asking them if they enjoyed giving head oh boy um i gotta say man i got caught up tomorrow i have a trial and i'm a little nervous i have to get a court appointed attorney i don't trust anyone though the lawyer i was supposed to have wouldn't stop asking me for money when i told her i have it in three days I don't lie. I'm honest as fuck. All right. I always get nervous when people say I don't lie. Everybody, anybody knows me knows I tell the truth. I didn't do that. All right. So basically what happened, I got pulled over by the cops telling me straight up uh, they saw me talking with a known prostitute. For sure, it was a sting operation, even though she showed me her tits. She was cute. Too cute, if you ask me. A little too cute. Um, so she got in my car and asked me what I wanted. I told her, but she wanted more money. So I said, no, thanks. Uh, she got out and I decided to go home. I pull out into the street and literally not even 30 seconds later, I see lights come on behind me. Luckily, I didn't go to jail. They gave me a ticket and impounded my car, though. All right. So what's the problem? I've been bullshitting my mom. I told her the car's in the shop. I thought you said you don't lie and that you're honest as fuck. Anyways, I had to spend two grand to get it back, but it was in my mom's name, so I had to come up with another lie. I thought you said you didn't lie. You're honest as fuck. And I was trying to sell the car, even though that makes no fucking sense. What? So I needed paperwork stating she was my mother, giving me permission to retrieve my car from the county clerk's office and have it notarized by the bank. I know, Bill, I don't lie. If I told my mom she, this, she'd probably die. All right. So he kind of covered his tracks in. No joke. I'm the youngest of five, all fuck ups, all boys. I'm supposed to be the good one, and I am. I was just being stupid. I think the only thing that's worrying me is the fine. Probably like five to ten grand. Oh well. Thanks for the time to read this. By the way, I live, I'm gonna say where you live. I have tickets to your show. Uh can't wait. Anyways, thanks and go fuck yourself. All right, well, she's probably gonna find out. I would just tell her. I just tell her, just say, listen, I fucked up. You know, I fucked up. Uh, she's your mother. She'll forgive you, right? I don't know. I think I would be more worried about the five to $10,000 fine than your mom not loving you anymore. All right? You fucked up. You made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes. You, you made a mistake. Um, you know. It's what the fucking life is. You make mistakes, you learn from your mistakes, you move on, you try to do better. All right? That's it. I've said it for a long time. If people were cars, we'd be recalled. There's a reason the world is so fucked up. It's because humans are running it. Okay? We're just smart enough to be fucking morons. Uh, all right. This girl is killing me, man. All right. Dear Billy Bighead. <laughs> 
Oh, shit. You guys are really accurate this week. Uh, back nine, big head. I mean, what, what? I'm fucking on the ropes here. Somebody throw in the towel. Uh, I am a sophomore in high school, but I've been listening to your podcast for a year now. I, I need some advice. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is fucking scary. I hope you need some fucking regular advice. All right. I need some advice on how to handle this girl. Hey, Nia, are you out there? Nia? You want to you wanna give this kid some advice? Oh, that's right. You're sick. Okay, sorry. Hang on. Let me hit pause here. Hang on, hang on. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Jesus Christ. She's still sick. She's still sick. I'm sleeping upstairs again tonight. Um, all right. Uh, sophomore in high school, and I need some advice on how to handle this girl. <clears throat> I dated her for about nine months last year. A lot of heartache this this week, and learned a lot. The problem is that this girl is really immature, and I cannot have a conversation with her without her arguing. Sorry, I picked this up. Without her arguing with me or something over something not important. Oh, dude, you're a so- who gives a shit? Fucking move on to the next one. For example, towards the end of my relationship with her, she gave me the silent treatment for multiple days because I told her I didn't like Australia. She constantly (laughs) insulted me, called me dumb, and told me I was a terrible brother. Are you dating your sister? Or she just observed your family? What state did this come from? And did crazy things like this throughout our relationship? She's one of those girls who thinks that she... She's always she that she always gets to be right, and I am not. And I am not about that life. He says uh, when she broke up with me, it was this whole scene. Well, dude, this sounds like you dodged a bullet here. What dating is all about is meeting what you don't want, and then you figure that out, and then you finally fucking meet the right person. You totally you're fucking young as shit. What's the problem here? I got very close with her family. And well, so you're a good guy. And when we broke up, her seven year old sister sobbed. Jesus Christ. Her mom even went to the extent to call me on the phone to tell me I was a great boyfriend and wish me wish that me and her could possibly work things out in the future. Her family adores me to this day due to the fact that I really played up the whole nice guy thing. Oh, what are you really an asshole? This is where things get even worse. She constantly leads leads me on and I fall for it. Yeah, that's what being young's all about. And at a town fair, we have, we have, she hung out with me all weekend. We were very flirty, and she heavily led me on. But when I asked her out, she said she wasn't ready. All right, dude. This once again, if you listen to the last one, this is why you do not stay in contact with ex girlfriends. Okay. She just doesn't. She doesn't want you to meet someone else until she's met somebody. Or I don't. I don't. What, what, I don't know what the fuck they think. I just know. I just know you just you gotta you gotta you guess you gotta walk you gotta walk. All right. The same thing happened a few months later. I have left her alone for the past few months, only talking to her once every three weeks, and every time she ends up being mad at me for some dumb reason. An hour ago, she was mad at me for not roasting her and called me pathetic. Roasting her? I'm trying to figure out where the fuck you live. You got a little fair, a town fair, and then you guys also have roasts? I don't know what this is. All right. She apologized all the time for her action, but continues to do the same thing. Should I not even talk to her, or should I forgive her because she's just immature and can't handle her feelings? Any advice would be appreciated, especially if you get the, uh, the lovely Nia to answer as well. Hope the family's doing great and go drink a beer. It's hilarious. Um, yeah, I would just have a, a, a conversation. I would just say, listen, uh, I don't enjoy talking to you because you always get mad and you yell at me. We are broken up and I don't think it's healthy for us to continue talking to one another. However, when I see you, I don't want it to be weird. So is there a way? That you, you in a nice way could just fuck off and let me get on with my life. But if I see you, you know, we could just walk by, you know, we could raise eyebrows, you know, and acknowledge that we saw each other. Maybe we could high five and not saying anything, you know, and then if she flips out, it gives a fuck. 
Who gives a fuck? I mean, it just doesn't, you know, doesn't sound like. Here's a question for you. Since you broke up, has it ever ended well? Any interaction, any interaction you've had with her. Okay. If the answer is no, then you got to stop interacting with her. But it seems like it's such a small town. I'm judging you because you went to a fair. Okay. So in my world, you brought your prize pig down there. And I don't know what the fuck happened after that. All right. Um, I would say, yeah, I would just, you know, there's, I imagine plenty of other women, you, uh, you know, uh, what's the proper word at that age? Chicks you can fucking go to school with. There's really no middle world, right? Girls. You're not a girl at that point. You're a fucking teenager. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going on Wikipedia again. I don't know what the fucking word is. Okay. There's plenty of other fucking chicks you can be hanging out with. All right. That's it. And here's the thing. Here's a tip for you. When you fucking hang out with them, don't talk about your old relationship. What about some other fucking woman? They don't, they, they, well, yeah, they don't want to hear it. Just go have a beer with one of your buddies out in the woods. However the fuck you do it. And just be like, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't encourage underage drinking. Whatever the fuck you you guys do. That's when you vent. Um, what you, what you have to do is every time it, it starts to scab over, she calls up or you call her and then you got an open wound again. What you got to do is you got to, you got to heal like a fucking X-Man. And then the next time you see her, and I guarantee if you don't give a fuck, she's going to fucking be all over you and want to hook up. And this is what you have to do. You got to not do it. And then watch how quickly all that, all that flirty turns into fucking anger. And then she's going to yell at you and then just be, keep you cool and be like, this is why I don't hang out with you. Cause you're fucking crazy. Something like that. And I would also ask some more adults who actually, actually know the people involved in this story, including yourself. Okay. All right, good luck to you. All right, ex-girlfriend hooks up with stranger at party we both attended. Okay. Hey, Billy, on the back nine of life. That's true. My girlfriend and I broke up about four months ago after an 11-year relationship. Wow, sorry to hear that. We share a lot of the same friends, and I knew we would see each other at a friend's New Year's party. Two days before the party, my ex hit me up and asked to get a drink and clear the air before seeing each other for the first time since the breakup. We had an awesome time, and we ended up going out again uh, the next night and had an even better time. She then asked if I wanted to share a cab to and from the New Year's party. I agreed. Well, at the party, she met a guy, and they were all over each other the entire night. Oh, God. She ended up ditching me and going home with him at the end of the night. I have hooked up with a few people since the breakup, but never in front of my ex. And after the previous two nights, I was to- absolutely devastated by what she did. I would love any advice or insight. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Well, that it really seemed like, unless she was completely shit-faced, that really seemed a little calculated. And that right there, sir, your story right there is why... I avoided staying in contact with ex-girlfriends. Um, not saying they were all bad, but I had a girlfriend like that, an ex. And uh, they have like this sixth sense as right as you're starting to get past and over them. They just feel it. They call you up and they just fuck your life, your head up all over again. Um, here's one for you, dude. What kind of a person would do that? Huh? The kind of person that you don't want to put your seed in. Just know that that could have been the mother of your fucking children. You dodged a bullet. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Okay? And I'm willing to bet that unless she completely fucks up her life, you will not hear from her again. Or you will hear from her because she is a sadistic person and wants to hear your reaction she wants to hear the pain and get off on it while she goes like well i didn't think there'd be a problem because we were broken up so i don't know why you're putting this on me okay i thought we both had we had a nice time we were adults and the whole time she's just getting off on the fact that you still give a fuck 
So, uh, dude, you dodged a major fucking bullet. I mean, I, I, I would never do that to somebody. I would never. I, I wouldn't do that. Like, if, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't do that now. I've been with Nia forever. I, if I saw an ex girl, I would never fucking. I would just whisper, Nia, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here, you know? Let's go someplace a little more quieter. I would never do that to somebody. That's just a fucking asshole, male or female. To do that to somebody is a really fucking asshole thing. I'm sorry that happened to you, but you know what? You know what's great, dude? She's out of your life. She's out of your life. And you know, you know what those people are about? They're like those what about Bob people. You know, remember the beginning of what about Bob? The therapist gets Bill Murray's character away from him, dumps him in fucking Dreyfus's lap. That's what she's, she's the fucking female version. Those what about Bob people? If you can ever dump them off on other people, it's fucking tremendous. And she did it to herself. And this is what you do. Anytime you ever see her after that, just big smile on your face. Big smile on your face. Hey, how you doing? Hey, are you mad? No, nah, no, we broken up. Good for you. You know, have the time of your life. All right. Nice seeing you. Leave. All right. And uh, now's a great time, dude, to fucking expand your horizon, find new friends, indulge in a fucking hobby, travel, get yourself in great shape, go to the gym. It's time to you fucking work on you. And that person you, that is, is in the rear view fucking mirror. You know what? All she did was give you a great fucking story to tell the love of your life because that, that chick ain't it. All right? Enjoy your 2018. You're a free man. Circus. All right. Hot girl in coffee shop. I like the sound of this already. Uh, old Billy Boozless. That's right. Billy Boozless. Boozless. 80 days. But we'll be 81 by the time uh, you listen to this unless I go off the rails tonight. Um, big fan of your stand up. And the podcast all the way from Glasgow, Scotland. Sorry, I'm yawning. All the way from Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, I'll cut to the chase. Um, Glasgow, Scotland. That's where um, ACDC recorded their If You Want Blood live album. Right? In a venue that doesn't exist anymore because I tried to find it when I was over there. I'll cut to the chase. I'm a 23-year-old guy who had who has recently graduated from college and moved down to London about five months ago to start a new job. All right. I am enjoying life in my new surroundings, and the girls down here are of another planet compared to back home. However, there is one, there is one, there is one four in particular who has caught my attention, and I'd like your advice on the best way to ask her out. The lovely Nia's advice is welcome. She'd probably have a better idea of what to do here than I would, but she's not here as I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin right now. All right. She works in a coffee shop near my work, and she is immense, easily a 9.3 slash 10. I never have a problem with women, but 90% of the time I have had a few beers in me at the time, and my confidence is at its peak. Can you give me any advice on how to ask this girl out, given that it's a small coffee shop in full view of the general public? Uh, we had some chat. Oh, that's good. So I was going to say, go in there and start talking to her. And I'm 80% sure she's into me, but I'm shitting myself in case I get the rejection. And there's around 30 people there to witness it. Dude, fuck those other 30 people. What you have at your fingertips is a great story. No matter what happens, you either possibly meet the love of your life Right? Settle down, have kids together, and live happily, happily ever after. Or you have a hilarious fucking story. Dude, fuck that. The worst she can say is no. Who gives a shit? Oh, dude, I'd ask her out in the middle of the meal. You know, just to make the awkwardness even further. Just steer. Who gives a fuck? Fuck that, dude. If you can chat up women, it's not because you're drunk. It's because you got rid of that stupid voice in your head that says that you can't. You obviously can't. Alcohol doesn't make you talk to women, all right? It doesn't make you talk to women better. What it does is it gets rid of your fucking fear so you can actually, you know, perform. This is like some fucking uh, John Daly shit. Like, he used to have a couple of Coors Lights so he'd relax more, hit the ball further. I'm not saying to go in there shit-faced. Fuck, I got to go back to this Kansas City touchdown. It was a pass. 
Sorry. Anyways. Yeah, dude. I just go in there. Dude, fuck this. You're the man. She works in a coffee shop. She's not splitting atoms. All right? Just go in there. All right? Just go in there. Bill, just, just not even like fucking try to walk in like you're the man. He's some badass dude. Just fucking like block out that voice. Anytime you hear that voice, it's going to go great. Make her laugh. You know, when she said, uh, would that be all? Just ask, ask her for a number. Dude, you, uh, you know you should ask fucking Joe DeRosa. One time I was with Joe DeRosa. You want to talk about guy fearless? I was with Joe DeRosa one time. We went out to breakfast, and the waitress came over, you know, and uh, he's kind of checking her out or whatever, and we fucking eating. We were eating our food, and he goes, what do you think of that waitress? I'm like, she's cute. He goes, yeah. He goes, I think I'm going to ask her out. And she comes back to the table. like, will that be all? And he fucking asked her out right in front of me, right? And she gave him his number. Now, if she shot him down, not only it's like that story would have left. It's not like either would just be like with you with a bunch of strangers. I could have sat there and laughed at him, which I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have laughed at him, but he, maybe he would have thought that I did. And he didn't give a fuck. So I think you go Joe DeRosa on this one. All right. Listen, what is the deal? You're attracted to her. You want her number to ask her out. All right. So fucking do that. That's what you want. That's the same way you handle your career in life. What do you want to do? Go do that. Who do you want to be with? You know, that's a different thing because they have a say. (laughs) But you got to ask. That's it. So I don't know. I don't know what your deal is. If you're a funny guy, whatever your deal is. I don't know. Whatever you're doing, it seems to be working because you're feeling a vibe like she's into you. All right? So just stop listening to that voice going like, oh, my God, what happens if this happens? Hey, what happens if she says yes? Think about that. All right? There you go. All right. Um, all right. Plowing ahead. Uh, Bill, uh, so something kind of ridiculous happened to me the other day, and you're the only person who I think might appreciate my point of view on the matter. Okay. So there's this really good-looking lady uh, that works at the sandwich shop around the corner from my job. So I've go- been going there for like a year now, and I've always wanted to say something to her, but never did because either the place was too busy at the time or I just pussied out, usually the latter. So the other day, I finally man up and decided to say something, and it went a little something like this. Uh, I go in after two, so it's not as busy. I place my order. She makes me a wrap. She hands me a wrap, and I say, excuse me. Uh, I've been coming in here for a while, and I've always wanted to introduce myself. And before I can even get the words out, her smiling expression turns blank. Her lips seal tight, and she kind of looks up at her eyebrows with that, you got to be fucking kidding me, look all over her face. I can only equate... Ah, shit, I just hit the wrong button on my computer. Um, He goes, I can only equate the look to uh, to an employee, what an employee might have, When they're done with their work for the week and on Friday evening, right as they feel like they're going to get out of there, the boss comes and drops another hour's worth of paperwork on their desk. They can't say anything, but you know they're thinking, you fucking prick. So what I end up saying after I get this look from this chick is this is basically what the guy says. He said, excuse me, I've been coming in here for a while and I've always wanted to introduce myself. You know what? Fuck it. Never mind. And he goes, I turned around and I just walked out. <laughs> all right. And he goes, now here's my issue. Dude, we've all been there, all right? We've all fucking been there. Um, all right. So he goes, now here's my issue. It's not that I was rejected. Big deal. That shit happens all the time, right? Uh, that's like an ongoing theme in an adult life, and I've learned to live with it. Jesus, dude, don't jump off a cliff here. Um, he goes, my problem is that society, I can't even talk, society, my problem is society dictates that the guy should approach the girl, and all the girl really needs to do is look pretty, throw a few signals, and wait for dudes to start clamoring like morons. Is it fair? No. But then again, it, it's really not a big deal. It's one of the situations you grow accustomed to. But if that is the case, and if all women have to do is be pretty, then say yes, or go fuck yourself, could they at least wait 30 seconds for me to say whatever retarded shit whatever retarded shit I'm thinking before they shoot me down? All she has to do is wait a minute and say, no, thank you. But instead, I get cut off by stink eye mid-sentence. Should I have told her to go fuck herself? What are your thoughts on this sort of shit? Your true and loyal fan, 
Bobo the douchebag. All right. Um, what are my feelings on this? All right. First of all, dude, we've all been there. We've all, you know, you got it in your head. You're going to come up there like fucking Sean Connery in one of those early James Bonds. You even feel like you got a fucking tuxedo on. And then the second you open your mouth, you sound like fucking Arnold Horshack. And you even want to shoot yourself down at that point, okay? Um, but in answer to your question, uh, should I have told her to go fuck herself? No. That's not... Th oh, I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, having not been there. I, I can't... It'd be t it would depend on what the look on her face was or how she looked. You know, if, uh, if she was just some hot girl who didn't have a brain in her head, yeah, then you tell her to go fuck herself. But this is a really cute girl and you actually feel like, wow, I, you know, I'd like to get to know that girl. No, you don't tell her to go fuck herself. It's actually in that moment when she gives you the stink eye is when you have to come up with something funny to say, something, something clever, something so you show that you're not going to quit in life. Because that's what, I hate to say it, dude, but that's what you showed her. You showed her that you have, you have the quit DNA in your fucking ball bag, and she's not going to want to mate with you. <laughs> but fortunately, there's plenty of other gazelles out there on the fucking Serengeti that you can try to run down. You see the Discovery Channel. Cheetah doesn't always fucking run the thing down. Sometimes it gets kicked in the face, and then it sits there feeling stupid. Especially when it realizes it's being filmed, it's going to be on basic cable. There's where you can you can actually look at a bright side. It wasn't filmed. Did you, you just got to kind of come up with something um, in that moment that's funny? And I actually kind of thought about it, what I would have said, and I would have choked even if I tried to come up with something funny because in the moment I would have felt like a douche and I probably would have attacked what she did for a living, which is the worst thing you can do. I'd be like, really? You know, you fucking you've been working here for a year and a half, two years. I've been you're making sandwiches. You're not getting any younger there, sweetie. <laughs> All right, you know, I would, it would have been bad. It would have been bad. It's very easy for me, you know, for me to sit here and tell you what you should have done. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you, when you watch a, a, a football game or something like that, and once it ends and whatever the game plan was didn't work out, they dude, why didn't they give it to Marshall Falk? I don't understand. Um, it's easy to do that. So um, I don't know what to tell you, like, you know, it'd be funny. You got to go back there and keep ordering sandwiches. I don't know. That's fucking humiliating. You might, you might have to find a new place to get a sandwich, dude. I got to be honest with you. I don't know how you pull yourself out of that one. What did you say? Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Oh, this is what you do, dick. Okay, so just walk in. Just kind of be a dick. You know, when she, you just walk up. Hey, sunshine. <laughs> or something. I don't listen to me. All my shit just always ends up with, you know, there's a reason I get heckled as much as I do because I'm an asshole. Um, but as far as like uh, what you said earlier, because I know there's a lot of women pulling their fucking hair out right now when you say all a woman has to do is be pretty and wait for the offers to come in. Um, I don't know, dude, if you ever had a girlfriend, first of all, that whole thing of looking pretty from my standpoint and my experience takes at least four and a half fucking hours. And... Um, and you never know. That girl might have been giving you the stink eye because she's a really good-looking girl, and she she has a public she has a job where she deals with the public. So, believe it or not, the amount of ugly, fucking out of shape dudes who actually don't have a problem approaching beautiful women uh, is actually it's the it's pretty high. I mean, personally, I think it's funny, but um, if you're a woman, it's it's not as funny. And I think that's something that took me a long time to realize how, like, um, uncomfortable that feeling can be. You know, because guys think, dude, I would love to be standing there and women hitting on me. But what you have to do is you got to see how we're physically made up. The fact that a guy, you know, what, what if there was this thing that physically could beat the shit out of you and it wanted to enter your body? <laughs> that's the only way to try to put yourself... And, the, and what if it's if you're not attracted to it and you feel it getting angry when you're trying to communicate that, you know, you're all set, you know, and then there's the option that if they wanted to, they could give you a forearm shiver and begin to execute their plan, you know. Oh, Jesus, how do I talk myself out of this one? You know what it's like? Put it this way for all the guys listening out there. If somebody said, hey, man, I'll give you 10 bucks. This is like an old joke I used to do in my act. I'll give you 10 bucks. 
to walk over to that birth birthday cake and stick your finger in it. You got you you, you got ten bucks? Yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. You know, twenty bucks or whatever, just something. You know, you do it. You wouldn't think anything about it. Whatever, stick it in. You take it right back out. You know, you wouldn't give a fuck. But what if somebody said, "Dude, I'll give you I'll give you twenty bucks to take that cake and put it in your ass." <laughs> See what I mean? There'd be a difference. Then, then you you would have some questions. <laughs> you know, where is that cake been? Are are you going to tell anybody? I usually don't do things like this. You know, that's that's why women they, they approach sex that way. You know, they got to have rules on when they're going to fuck you and all that. It's it's a did that did that example. I I know on some level it made sense. I, I'm a little jet lagged. I haven't done that joke in a while, and I got to admit, halfway through it, it didn't even make sense to me. I'm just saying, you know. Did I answer your question? Um, so this is what you got to do. You got to treat uh, you got to treat women like uh, like I treated open mics. Okay, you just know you're gonna bomb, and eventually you're gonna get good at it. So just keep you know, make some notes. What you, what you're gonna do the next time that happens? You know, maybe try to come up with a couple of lines. And I hope women, I hope you appreciate uh, what a fucking pain in the ass it is for a guy to get laid. You know what I mean? And that's why there's the whole um, stud whore double standard because basically for a guy to get laid this is what he has to go through this guy actually has to develop skills to get laid you know all you have to do is show up you know i mean for a guy the brass ring is getting a two-on-one no tv credits no my dad has a yacht you just get it from talking shit that is the brass ring for a guy now a woman her first night of fucking all she'd have to do is lay down on a pool table she could fuck every guy in the bar it's it's not a skill it's gluttonous you know it's gluttonous. It's like watching a fat guy eat an ice cream. You never cut him. You don't cut him any slack. Haven't you had enough? Um, all right. <laughs> I'm really glad I redid this podcast because this other one was not nearly as fucked up as this one. I don't know if it's funny, but... My friend's dad wants to pay me to get naked. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Or the last one, girlfriend and best friends graduating same time, different places. Thank you. A nice sitcom trope I can finish with here. I got two dates in one night. All right, let's get through this one. My, my friend's dad wants to pay me to get naked. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Mr. William Frederick Burr. Hope you're doing good. Big fan of the podcast and all your other shit. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm a 24-year-old guy from the UK. Okay, the UK. Until recently, I'd been working behind the bar in the local pub where my friend's dad would drink regularly. I met him a handful of times over the past 10 years or so as his son. As his son is one of my best friends. He's about 70 years old and a very devout Catholic. Uh, that's not a good characteristic. Who has also worked at the church in some other capacity or another. I shouldn't blame the whole religion. Okay. Because maybe he's a good guy. All right. I've always got a weird vibe from him. Oh, boy. And he started to seem even weirder. Oh, Jesus. After seeing him multiple times in a week, he was giving me big tips, which is rare in the UK, and he would cut my hand with both hands for 10 seconds or so when he gave the money to me. He'd stare into my eyes saying all this weird complimentary stuff about me like, you're a very good ball, man. And you'll go far. <laughs> Sorry with the bad accent. So I started to feel something was off about this guy. Oh, God. This is like when Quint slid into the mouth of the shark. Uh, one day, after a month, a few months of generous tips from him and general weird encounters, he had about five large glasses of red wine. And got pretty drunk. As I was walking around the pub collecting glasses, he called me over to him and pulled me to one side in a dark, dimly lit corner. He hushed his voice ah, and got really close to me with his putrid breath wafting into my nose and said something along the lines of, Right, I have a proposition for you. First off, I just want to make it clear that I'm not gay. Oh, Jesus. I'm not gay at all. Right. Um, but what I, I want to do, but I do have, what I do have is a, an appreciation of, for the male form. I can't keep doing this accent. What I do have is an appreciation for the male form. 
I used to have a boy who I would pay 150 pounds, which is 200 or euros. That's 203 American. Really? To allow me to look at his naked body a few times per week. I wouldn't touch him or force him to do anything. He would simply get undressed and I would appreciate his body and pay him for his time. Does this sound like something you would be interested in? Oh, my God. I immediately said no. It was pretty shocked, but I didn't make a scene. I just laughed it off and said, sorry, I'm not interested. The next day, he came into the pub and practically begged me not to tell his son and started to give me even bigger tips in the following weeks. I tried to refuse, but he insisted. It was basically hush money. It was like I was wrapped up in some sort of big scandal and being paid for my silence. Um, there was one time where he ran into the pub looking really flustered during a storm. What little hair he has left was all over the place and was stuck to his, to his red, wet, veiny face. Jesus Christ. His clothes were drenched. He was really out of breath, and he ran up to me and said, you haven't told him, have you? That's fucking nuts, because the person was probably acting weird or slightly different. I haven't told him, no, I said. He was clearly really worried about what he'd said, so I couldn't help but feel a little sorry for him, as he's clearly gay and most likely suppressed it his entire life due to him being a devout Catholic. That's what I was thinking. I feel bad for that. I feel, you know, obviously, that you had to fucking have that fucking interaction. But I mean, yeah, that's what this is. This is why you should just let people be who the fuck they are. Uh, my gut instinct is to just never mention it to anyone, but a second opinion would be great. Yeah, dude, I wouldn't say anything. He's 70 fucking years old. All right. <clears throat> you know, to his credit, he asked, you said no. And then that was it. And now he's just saying, please don't tell anybody. Anyway, so essentially, I know that one of my best friend's dad is trying to cheat on his mom with young men. So part of me feels like his wife has the right to know. But on the other hand, I don't want to ruin their family. So my question to you is, should I bring it up with my friend? What should I do? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Uh, but instead, just have a nice. Thanks and don't go fuck yourself. But instead, just have a nice day for me, will you? Um, all right. Uh, saying love to yourself, knee and the little baby. Thank you. Looking forward to the new episode family. Thank you. Uh, no, the guy's fucking seven years old. I mean, uh, what are you going to do at that point? You know, I, I, I don't know. As a guy bisexual, I have no fucking idea. All I know is he asked, you said no, and he's left you alone other than panicking that you're going to fucking tell somebody. So, uh, I feel like that's his, if he wants to tell people, that's his, that's his thing. You know what I mean? I don't fucking know. For all you, I mean, I would think that his wife on some level might even fucking know. Who the fuck knows? I mean, relationships are very complex. To just fucking jump in there and think that you're going to be playing the hero when you don't have any of the information, I would just, just walk away from it. Just walk. I, that's what I would do personally, you know. Um, Jesus Christ, what a story! I feel like I was watching a movie. I miss having her on here. Um, anyways, all right. My girlfriend's daughter is causing us to break up. Is that a bad thing? Um, Jesus Christ! I mean, you're already dating somebody that already has a kid, so that's going to be already a hundred times harder to make that fucking work. And then the kid doesn't even like you. So I mean, maybe she's doing you a solid here. Um, hey, Bill. Okay, here we go. So my girl and I of seven years both work for the same company, and I was offered a better position in Florida, and she was also offered a position as well. Now, here's where the daughter comes in and fucks up the flow. Yeah, because she fucking probably wants to stay at her school. Her daughter's 14, is just starting high school, and is refu refusing to move, and her mother is going along with not forcing her to move and is going to pass her is going to pass on her position. We agreed I will not move down and get things in order until she... Wait. We agreed I will move down and get things in order until she gets there in four years. Now, for the past few weeks, we've been getting into more fights, and her reasoning for the fight is... Sit down for this one, Bill. She says it's easier for me to leave... 
when she's mad. She's fighting you because it's easier for you to leave when she's mad. I think that's the dumbest fucking reason I've ever heard. Also, she keeps saying I'm going to go down and find myself some black ass and end up cheating on her while I'm there. Would love to get your take on this situation and get your insight on what I should do. Thanks. And pick up a fucking drink, you pussy fuck. <laughs> I would say... Uh, I'd say there's a staggering lack of trust. Um, I think the key here is to not get into an argument with her, is to just sit down and try and discuss it with her and just say, listen... Um, we agreed that this is what I was going to do. And now what it is, is, you know, I think this is what happened. What she did was is she did what was best for her daughter and she put herself with you in second, but she still sounds like cares about you. And the fact that you're down there, she's worried that you're going to leave and she misses you. I think that that's what's happening. So I would just ask her, is this some like misdirected anger? I, where you're actually just saying that you miss me and you love me? Is that what you're saying here? We could work through this. And then if you're really not going to fuck around with honor and you're really going to see it through, then you ought to be able to just say, listen, I'll do whatever it takes. I'm going to be there in four years. If you're not lying, I think you ought to be able to work your way through it. And um, I think this has less to do with the daughter than it has to do with the fact that she just misses you and she's afraid that you're going to find somebody else down there Evidently, wherever you moved, where uh, there's a bunch of black ass down there. <laughs> That's what I would guess. So uh, you guys need to get on the same page. And you need to have an honest moment with yourself before you fucking slowly tear the Band-Aid off. Either get the fuck out of it or totally commit to her. Um, I mean, seven years at this point, why aren't you dropping a fucking ring on her? That ought to shut her up for a good couple of weekends. Um, it won't shut her up permanently. I can tell you that right now. I can. All right, here we go. Some, uh, some questions for the week. Hey, Bill, how do I tell my wife I'm an atheist? Bill, I have the greatest wife in the world, and we have two wonderful daughters. This is starting off like a horror movie. You know what I mean? How it's always like nice. There's always like leaves falling in a gazebo, but there's just that hint of creepy music. Remember they used to do that back in the 80s when they couldn't just depend on special effects? They actually had to build suspense. That's how this is. Look at this guy. He has a great, he has a great, he has the greatest wife in the world, everybody. And he has two wonderful daughters. Uh, there's a problem, though. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, she is a devout Christian. All right, dude, why are you acting like you just met her? You fucking married her. And he goes, and I finally decided that I don't believe in any of it. Oh, that's why. Oh, well, dude, welcome to enlightenment. You know, you can't throw it all out the window, but, you know, the seven deadly sins, the Ten Commandments, all that shit makes sense. But all that other stuff, you know, burning bush, talking to a bat that's walking on a fucking lake. I mean, come on. I mean, are, are we adults here or what? You know, you have to throw your first baby over a cliff to show that you love me. Hey, I was just fucking with you. You passed the test. What the, what is that? Booming voice coming from the clouds. You know, I just don't buy it. Something's coming back, like, for the love of God, what, what, what is it waiting for? You know what I mean? Is Jesus like Thurman Thomas trying to find his fucking helmet during the Super Bowl? Is that, is that what's going on here? Um, that's two Thurman Thomas references two weeks in a row. You find another fucking podcast that does it three weeks in a row, and God damn it, you should stop listening to this one. Um, anyways, he says, I finally decided that I don't believe in any of it. I thought about telling her the old joke, we're both atheists, I just believe in one less God than you do. Uh, but she wouldn't find that funny at all. She is okay, she, she's, she is okay for now going to church without me because I work nights. But I have a feeling that when the kids get a little older, that I will have to become more involved. Should I tell her now or just let it be and hope that it never comes up? Well, I have to tell you, sir, if you do in fact have the greatest wife in the world, she'll accept you for who you are. And if you're an atheist and you don't believe in the stuff that she believes in, then, you know, 
There you go. This is what I would do. Let her, let her take him to church. I, I don't know what to do. You know what would be funny? What if you took up needlepoint? Okay, and when you went to church, you just did needlepoint with your legs crossed in the most effeminate way possible. Maybe that's the way you do it, like some passive-aggressive way that you so embarrass the most wonderful wife in the world that she asks you not to come. You know? What if you do like a needlepoint that just is like little atheistic sayings and you make pillows and when they have like the church drive, like the bake sale and they wash your car, you sell, you sell the pillows that you sew during the Mass. Oh, you know what? And they say, Jesus is Lord, but it's almost like, like one of those Pink Floyd songs that if you, if you play it, I don't know, if you listen to something, they got like hidden messages or something, or, or, or maybe they never did. Maybe just these Jesus freaks did. That's going to really freak them out. It may have like subtle messages in like the, the outskirts of the pillow about this is all a bunch of bullshit. And uh, you don't believe in pedophilia. You know? No, oh, Jesus, I'll give me some fucking emails. Um, anyways, what did he ask? Should I tell her now or just let it be and hope that it never comes up? Um, you're basically saying, should I, should I man up and be who I am or should I stick my head in the sand? Okay, That's, that, those are your two options. So I, I'm going to throw this back at you, sir. What kind of man do you want to be? Do you want to be the kind of man that sticks his head in the fucking sand when there's, there's a confrontation? Or you want to be that guy that just sits down and just says, listen, sweetheart, I tried. I just don't, I don't believe it. Okay? And I think it's great that you believe it. If you want to go down there and sing the songs, shake some hands, close your eyes, right? Make a pledge for Jesus, whatever the hell you want to do, you go down there and you do that. All right? It's like watching football. I like doing it. You know, you don't, you're not into it. You know, I don't, I don't make you watch football, do I? I don't do that. You know why? Because I'm the greatest husband in the world. Why don't you try that? Just ask her. Listen. Wait, does she know? She, oh, wait, she knows that you're not going. Ah, Jesus. You know what? You might want to give her a little Jesus juice and uh, get her a little liquored up. I don't, I don't want to. You know what, dude? This, you, you, got, you got to tell her. You know, I don't like how you're deliberately working. I feel like you're deliberately working late on Sundays or early on Sundays, whenever the hell she goes, so you, so you can just avoid this. You're avoiding shit, sir, and this is a snowball, all right? A snowball of Jesus, and it's rolling right down towards you, and at some point it's, it's going to roll over you, you know? And there's going to be some fucking creep in church, like that priest on the fucking Sopranos that's going to come over and fucking hold her hand when you're out there doing the, your, your little job there. All right? So I say you just tell her. Just say, I, just look, just be, don't be a douche. Just say, I totally respect, I mean, I'm fucking around because I got to make this shit funny. I don't care if you believe in that shit. God bless you. You know, you know what? I hope you're right so you can laugh at me um, when we all die. Um, that's so stupid. Really, I'm going to hell for the rest of my fuck for the rest of my life. You don't think that's a little overkill? I think the Rockefeller laws are fucking bad. Anyways, um, yeah, just say, look, I respect that you're into that type of stuff. And listen, you know what, dude? Who gives a fuck? Somebody took you to church. Somebody took you to church, and you, after a while, realized that you didn't believe in it. So if she wants to take the kids to church. Just let her take him to church. But she, your wife has to be okay with the fact that they, if they say, Daddy, how come you don't go down and pray to the hippie? You can say, because I, I don't believe in that stuff. I don't think it happened. Okay? In a couple of years, you'll understand what I mean when I tell you about old St. Nick. When I tell you the real story. You know? There you go. Santa Claus for adults every Sunday. All right. Um, all right. Icebreaker. Bill. I'm terrible at starting a conversation with a girl. I'm good in an actual conversation. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, I, you, okay. So you can just like if someone says, uh, hey, welcome to fucking Denny's. Can I help you? You're like, yeah, I'd like pigs in a blanket. Dude, I'm crushing, crushing that shit. Um, anyways, but I rarely get. Anyways, I'm good in an actual conversation, but I rarely get there because it starts off bad. 
What advice can you offer? Do you have any lines or topics that would work? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Dude, you're just going to have to learn to have a sense of humor about yourself. You're going to have to fucking bomb. You're just going to have to go up and bomb. There's, there's no fucking, hey, baby, what's your sign line that works? You've got to just come up. Here's the thing. Don't, if you're not good at hitting on women, don't go to a fucking meat market. All right? What you got to do is you got to chat them up. While you're, you're just doing, uh, Jesus, dude, it's been so long since I've been fucking singing. I, I was never good in the meat market bars. I was always better. Like, I met women on the train. I met them in, like, the fucking gym. I met them, like, uh, like when we were doing, like, we're both riding on a fucking train. You know what I mean? And there's no, they don't, they, I get, they have that guard up. To, I guess that you're not going to be a mugger. What the fuck would I do? How would I talk to them on a train? I would just wait for someone. To, if I saw someone that I liked on a train. Uh, the only way I could start up a fucking conversation is if some crazy homeless guy got on the fucking, you know, or some crazy person got on the subway and everybody's got that, oh, shit. And then you make eye contact with them. And then I always had a joke about the fucking homeless guy. That's right. I took the piss out of somebody who didn't have a house and that would break the ice. And then maybe, you know, you know, you're on the subway. It's like speed dating. You got to try to get the fucking number before they get off. Um but if, you, if you're not good at conversation, you got you to get good at it. And um, I would say the gym. Gym's kind of creepy. Hey, what are you working on? You know, she's fucking bent over, doing bent over rows, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, the only advice I have you, it's just like doing stand-up. You just have to get on stage. And you, just, you have to figure it out. Um, so that's what I would do. I would get over your fear of bombing by getting out there and just bombing. And have a sense of humor about how fucking bad it's going. Laugh at yourself and just keep swinging away. Just keep swinging away. I don't know. Just uh, go, go Ron Burgundy. Just be like overly arrogant about yourself, how fucking awesome you are, and just say, the, you, you know, that she's thinking all this awesome shit about you. You know, if you're an average looking guy, she'll think it's fucking hilarious. And you're kind of taking the piss out of yourself. There's that angle. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't, I don't fucking know. You got to ask a married guy. I have no fucking idea anymore. Somebody help this guy. Hey, you know what? Why don't you guys? Why don't you guys send me in your best icebreaker lines? And the only one I think I ever had a good opening fucking line was when I wanted to hit on this woman who was. I already told you this. I wanted to hit on this woman who was with this woman who was a redhead. And I walked up. I uh, what did I say? I said, oh. I go, oh hey, another redhead. I go, you going to the meeting? And then a friend laughed, and then the redhead thought I was into her, and I had to do, like, you know that swim move that rushers do when they're trying to get to the quarterback? I had to fucking, fucking push her out of the way and talk to the brunette. And then she was, like, fucking annoyed that I was hitting on her. And then her friend, I think, caved to the pressure of her cunty friend. Or maybe she just looked at me like, uh, I don't want to fucking talk to you. I made her laugh, though. I got one laugh. I think I got one laugh. In, in all my years in those meat market bars. Ah, oh, they're fucking horrible. Fucking horrible. You know what, dude? I don't know. You're asking another person that stunk at it. I can't help you. So how about, uh, how about uh, listeners? Give me your best and your worst fucking opening lines. Your best and your worst results. And I'll read those next week or whatever. And with any luck, that guy who hates me, someone will be playing it in the fucking background. Fellow redhead who happens to be short. Two dra drawbacks to getting laid with the question. Dude, what has happened to fucking redheads with their self-esteem? If you're a fucking guy, you can look like a troll. As long as you're funny, you got some charisma, you got a little bit of money. If you're doing shit in life, okay? Right, let me tell you something. If you're a fuck, I, I, I don't want to I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna do it that way because it's too mean. I was going to flip. I was going to flip it there. I'm not going to do that. I was going to say, like, looks, guys give a fuck about looks. Women want security. They don't want you to be a fucking mess, but I'm telling you, there becomes a point where you can offer such security that you're, uh, you're going to get a hottie. All right? So stop being a bunch of pussies dragging me down with you, you fucking assholes. Jesus Christ, there's people born without fucking legs. You know? You hear them bitching? Um, oh, I can't get a tan. No one's going to want to fuck me. Um, all right, let's plow ahead here. Uh, Bill, at what point do you tell your asshole friend to go fuck himself? 
Oh, I love this question. He says, is there a way to make it permanent without seem, seeming like the bigger asshole? I hate not addressing issues directly and like the, the clean break. And, le- oh, and, I, and I like the clean break, like telling an ex-girlfriend, you are a whore. Now kindly leave the premises. Um, however, telling my friend who has grown into a s- sanctimonious, holier-than-thou, ultra-liberal douche, that he's not worth my time on this planet will potentially make my so- social life difficult since we are in the same circle of friends. Isn't this stuff? This is one of the most fascinating things about male relationships that a lot of people don't talk about is when you have an unhealthy one with one of your friends and you literally have to break it off like like you're breaking up with the chick, which makes it even more awkward because then it, it feels like kind of gay on some level. And most guys, you know, not they were just not good with like, uh, you know, sitting down and discussing feelings. Like, I don't feel good about myself when I'm around you. <laughs> I can't say that. You gotta be like, dude, you're a fucking dick. Go fuck yourself. That's basically the level of it. So I, I kind of know what this guy's going through. Hey, Bill, I got an idea. Why don't you shut the fuck up, read the rest of the letter, and let this guy tell us what he's going through? Okay, it's a good point. Um, however, telling my friend who has grown into a sanctimonious blah, 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 I said that the other friends that I share with this guy do not see this side of him. You're really sounding like a battered wife right now. Like what? He slaps you around verbally and then you guys go out in public as you stare at the floor and everybody thinks he's what? The greatest guy ever. And you're just shy. This is getting kind of sad. Um, anyways, he goes, he hides it except when I'm just hanging out with him at the bar. This is kind of making you sound like a psycho. To put this into perspective here, some examples of the douchebaggery, the fact that you used douchebaggery just redeemed you, um, that I see from him. One, random Joe Sixpack throws his cigarette onto the street. My douchebag friend will go out of his way to pick the cigarette butt up and tell Joe Sixpack, hey, you dropped something, asshole, and proceed to bitch and moan like the cunt he is, even though the fucker, my friend, drives a Hummer. <laughs> Um, eh, you know, yeah, but the Hummer, you know, it's not leaking oil all over the place. There's nothing wrong with driving a Hummer. There really isn't. There's just too many people doing it. It's the population. It's not the cars. All right? I used to do a joke about that. If there was eight people on the fucking planet, we could all drive tanks. Number two, uh, politics. His opinion is right. Everyone else is stupid. Oh, number two that he hates. Po- on politics. His opinion is right. Everyone else is stupid and wrong. Done. End of story. Number three, he tells really bad jokes that do not make sense or have context, which he then proceeds to laugh uproariously at. Four, gives unwanted advice regarding my job that he has never done, has no knowledge of, and still assumes my 13 years of experience are of no value because of an article he once read in Forbes magazine. Five, cheats on his girlfriend and justifies it by saying, she just sucked my dick. I mean, that's it. I mean, what uh, So he says, what do you do? I'm leaning towards the go fuck yourself and leave me be approach and let my friends see what an egomaniac this guy is. Thoughts on if it's better, if there's a better way. Thanks. Um, Oh, Jesus. Uh, You said something up here earlier that kind of stuck out. Um, Is there a way to make it permanent without seeming like the bigger asshole? Yeah. There's a way to do that. And the way to do it is when you tell this guy to fuck off is you don't tell him to fuck off. You just lay it on the line. You just say, listen, you know, your 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 opinions on politics are, are, are just, it's overbearing. You know, you're screaming at people. Uh, you know, I don't know this guy enough to put it eloquently. Um, I don't know. You just... You, you, the worst thing to do is just be like, dude, I think you're a douche. Go fuck yourself. Then then you will seem like an asshole. You know, I don't even know how to do this. I had a situation like this a long time ago. There was a friend of mine. He was just a fucking, he just kept smoking weed. Kept smoking weed every fucking, this wasn't guy, you know, smoke weed, whatever, and then fucking showed up to work on time. This guy went to work high and fucked up. Okay? Just like an alky. You know, you can have a couple, you know, you can get drunk on the weekends, but, you know, Monday through Friday, you're stone sober. I don't think you have a drinking problem. You just like to drink. Same thing with weed. You know, after work, you fucking take a couple of tokes. 
You giggle at the fucking news, you go to sleep, who gives a shit, right? But when it starts fucking with your life and you start flunking drug tests and you start losing jobs, you know, and your wife's threatening to leave you, right? That type of shit. I don't know. What did I end up doing? I just uh, I just kind of stopped returning calls is what I did, which is probably, I don't know, like a pussy way. You know what it was is I was so angry at the dude that I knew that if we actually had the discussion, I was going to say something really fucked up. So that's how I handled it because I have a, a ridiculous temper. And uh, one of the things about having a temper is that a lot of times what it is is as – see, all this shit is happening to you. He's doing all this shit, and are you calling him out on any of it? I mean, if you are already still a cunt, then this guy's one of the biggest cunts ever. But, like, sometimes, like, somebody's doing something, and that annoys you, and you don't bring it up. And when you don't bring it up, then when they start to do something else that wouldn't really have annoyed you, you're already – uh you know, it's like someone just slapped you in the side of the face. So your face is already stinging and then they slap you again. It's, it's going to hurt even more. So it starts to exaggerate everything that they're doing. You literally sound like some some fucking chick in a relationship who wants to hit her fucking husband in the back of the head with the frying pan. And he has no clue. No idea. So, uh, yeah, this guy sounds like a dick. He definitely sounds like a dick. Uh, you know what I would do with this guy? I just I just stop hanging out with him. Hey, what are you doing today? You doing? Nah, I'm busy. That's kind of passive aggressive. I, I maybe just tell him. Just say, listen, dude. I don't know what it is about you, but I just really don't like you anymore. I just don't. You're a dick. You know, you fuck around with your girlfriend. Good for you. Go fuck around on her. Why do you got to drag me into it? Why do I have to know about it? Now I look at your girl. You know, your fucking girlfriend shows up. Now I got to pick figure, figure out like. Which part of her face I'm going to stare at instead of looking her in the eye? You're dragging me into it. You know? You're telling me how to do my job? You're a moron. You don't know what you're talking about. All your bullshit. Uh, you're, just, you're just fucking annoying. Yeah, why do you care, dude? You don't even like this guy. You know what's weird? is though That whole situation just really made me uncomfortable. You know? I've definitely had, like, fallen outs with people, but I've never, like, literally sat down... As a guy and broke up with another guy. Because <laughs> that's that's literally what you're doing. Listen. Uh, listen, Harry, I don't want to see you anymore. This relationship isn't working out for me. That's basically what you're saying. This is hilarious. This is a really like sex in the city moment here. It's not working out for you. You're not your needs aren't being met. <laughs> He doesn't look you in the eye anymore with tenderness when he asks you what you want when he's going up to buy a round of beers. Yeah, see, like this this is like something that guys were uh, – I don't know if it's not socially acceptable. Why is it making me so uncomfortable to even talk about this? Um, You know what? Forget everything I said. I think that the way guys do it is the way you should do it. Just say, listen, uh, you know what? You're a fucking dick. You're a dick. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. And that's it. You have a big fight with him. And then, you know, when he calls you, don't not take his calls. Just pick up the phone. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Listen, that yeah, sounds like fun. But you know what? I, I still think you're a dick. Tell you what, I'll call you when I don't think you're a douchebag anymore. How about that? Oh, you're going to yell at me now? Well, this is the greatest thing about being on the phone with a douche. Click. And that that's it. How about that? Jesus, it only took me 10 minutes. Um, you know, it's funny. I make it funny, but I know I know what that's like. Uh, that like being friends with a guy like that, a guy like that is funny in your college years. But as you get older, um, considering you said you had a job for 13 years doing something, even if you're right out of high school, 18 years, you're, you're, you're in your 30s. So a guy like this, you, you can't hang out with a guy like that anymore. Um, yeah, he's a fucking loser. And being a loser is contagious. The same way being successful is. If you hang out with successful people, you know, you get dragged up. If you hang out with fucking losers, they're a goddamn anchor around your neck. And they drag you down to the bottom. Drag you down to the bottom. Mixed race relation. Oh, Jesus Christ. I love when people think I'm an expert on this just because, you know. 
It's literally if I fell off a bed. Hey, Bill, you just you fell off a bed. I need some advice on falling off a bed. I don't know how the hell I ended up in this relationship. I just met her and I liked her. I asked her out and uh, I couldn't get rid of her. I didn't want to get rid of her. Every time I ever thought about breaking up with her when I was be like all in a panic of holy fuck. I've been in with her for three months. Oh, my God, the pressure, the pressure, all this pressure I was building up on myself. I would always picture her walking out of my apartment. And even in the fantasy of getting out of the relationship, I would always run out to go back and get her. And then it took me about a good, oh, seven, eight years to realize, Bill, that means because you love her and you don't want her to leave. Um, all right. Hey, Bill, you fucking alabaster bastard. Alabaster bastard. You alabaster. Why did you do that? Hey, Bill, you fucking alabaster. Uh, I'm also a white guy who has just started going out with a smoking hot black chick. I have no idea what she sees in me, but who gives a fuck, right? She makes me happy, and I seem to be hap- make her happy too, so it's all good. Until you go outside. Uh, so on to my question. As someone who's in a successful, quote, mixed race, I don't know why it's in quotes, mixed race relation, I wonder if you have any insights or gotchas that might help my relationship last. Make, make my relationship last. And do you still experience any casual racism from the mouth-breathing morons? Um, I'll spell check this message and be careful to use correct punctuation too. So hopefully if you do read it, you won't sound like a preschool toddler auditioning for Sesame Street. Thanks for the podcast. I listen to them every week and go fuck yourself. I love how the punctuation is my fault still. It's still my fault. I'm the victim. Um, do I have any insights? Uh, yeah, this is my insight, is that uh, you two people are different than me and my wife because you're an individual, all right? So, I, you know, it's not like, well, when, when like... <laughs> It's like when you watch the Discovery Channel. Well, when dealing with the hippopotamus, there's an aggressive behavior when it's fucking partly cloudy. Um, uh, my advice is if you're with somebody and they make you happy, stay with them. If they don't, break up with them. That's it. All right? And if you're in that situation right now and you want to break up with somebody, don't use the holidays as an excuse. All right? Just get out now. Just get out now. I'll actually tell you, it's better to do it right before the holidays than after. Okay? Because as much as you're going to fuck up their Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa, uh, the new year comes. And with the new year, they'll be like, you know, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm just going to get forget about it. It was the worst year ever. You know? If you fucking wait till after the holidays, and then boom, their year starts. You just fucked up their whole next year. Because people think in calendar years for whatever reason. All right, so getting back to you. Um, I mean, what do you want me to say? Let's start listening to, to fucking Jay-Z. Um, I will tell you this. When it comes to that shit, uh, there is a still stay in your own lane kind of thing. Um, just because you're with her, don't start saying, uh, don't start using the expression woke. Uh <laughs> Is still, you know, I guess I can't give you advice. There are things like that. There are things like that. That no matter how much she loves you, you will immediately turn into an annoying white person. Um, and yes, racism doesn't magically go away because the two of you are now together. But I will be honest with you. It's just like if it wasn't racism, it would be something else. Um. You know, I kept talking about Chicago and Milwaukee, and they kept booing Chicago. They didn't like Chicago. So it's like people, oh, they, people don't like their next-door neighbors. They don't like the people they work with. You know, football teams don't like coaches and GMs that won them Super Bowls. So if it, if it wasn't that, it will be something else. And who gives a shit what other people think? You only go around once, and you should be with the person you're supposed to be with. That's what I think. All right? So have fun. Enjoy yourselves. And uh, that's it. Oh, I can tell you some stories. Oh, can I tell you some? Oh, sit right back and hear a tale, a tale of a married guy who jumps through all the fucking hoops and still gets the evil eye. All right, my wife. <laughs> uh, my wife is a who? Dear Bill, Billy Buttertits, fuck you, I'm losing weight. Uh, my wife, my wife, 
decided to have an affair four months ago. Oh, boy. Before I knew what was going on, she told me she didn't know if she wanted to be married to me anymore and that it was because I was too controlling. And by controlling, she means I told her as a stay-at-home mom, I had expectations. I expected her to keep the house clean and take care of our children as we agreed when she quit her job. Yeah, I mean, which is a totally fair ask, you know? But nowadays in this world of hyper-fucking-feminism, not all feminists are bad, but the fucking, the, uh, the God is great fucking crazy ones there, um, yeah, they would say that that was sexist, that, you know, well, why don't you work all fucking day and then come home and also have the house clean? You know what I mean? I mean, look, if you got a bunch of kids, it can only be so fucking clean. But the least you could do is order a pizza, right? Um, anyways, I would come home to her friends being at the house and her drinking all afternoon. Well, Jesus Christ, she's not even making an effort. You know, this is what happens when you draft in the first round, buddy. You know, you get those second rounders. They, they got something to fucking prove. You know, that's just what happens when you marry a 10. I'm assuming she's good looking if you're putting up with this shit. Uh, I would get home from work after being gone 15 hours and have to say something about how I felt that the house was a wreck and there was no dinner in sight. It never seemed to matter. Back in January, we moved to Denver from Atlanta, thinking everything would be better. And she met this 25-year-old guy who she proceeded to sneak around behind my back with and bring our children around. No way. I'm 38. She's 35. We have two children, and we've been married for almost 12 years. Yeah, dude. Yeah, this is a wrap. Yeah, and now she wants a divorce and plans to move this kid into our home with our children. Oh, my God, dude. This is the worst person ever. I am beside myself with the thought of the divorce and this punk kid living with my children. Oh, my God. I know it won't last, but the fact is I don't want my children to be around this piece of shit, let alone living in my house. She, think this is, she thinks this is perfectly okay to put the kids and I through this. I do love her and would do anything to save our marriage, but the truth is she is delusional at this point, and I guess I am too. What do I do to stop this? I know this is not my fault because I busted my ass to build the life she always dreamed of, only for her to think she can kick me out of it. Any advice and or the lovely Nia you could give would be greatly appreciated. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Yeah, man. I mean, this is the things. This is what can happen to a guy. Um, but you're not allowed to talk about this on television, are you? Never. Never, never. You can talk about guys being overbearing, domestic violence, all those things that should be brought to light, but they will not talk about this. You watch Dr. Phil talk about this. You watch him blame the guy. So she's saying the reason that she sucked his cock was because you weren't paying enough attention to her. You need to try to pay attention more to her while she's sucking his dick. Um, what do I do to stop this? I don't know. Um, at this point, I would be thinking about my kids and how I could make this as, look, dude, is this what the fuck she wants to do? This is what the fuck she wants to do. How you make this as easy a fucking transition, your fucking divorce. Uh, I can tell you this. I know you called her a whore here. Don't ever say that to your kids. Because at the end of the day, it's still their mother. And you got to fucking, you know, you got to look the other way. Um, I don't know, dude. This is this is outside my fucking realm. Um, I can tell you this, dude. You're fucking 38 years old. You sound like a great fucking guy. Um... I would just, whatever you got to do for your kids, I would do that. Her is a fucking lost cause. All right? And I would, um, yeah, I would do that. And I would start P90X and, and go out and get yourself a fucking beautiful, good-hearted fucking woman. I would, I, would, I would maybe, even if you have time, I would go to therapy and figure out how the fuck you ended up. Unless she's just a total psycho. Like, so you don't go out and fucking marry that again. Um, figure that out. 
what the fuck? I'm trying to marry you off already. Jesus Christ, you, you're just getting out of something. I don't know, dude. This my head spinning over this one because I'm putting myself in your shoes. I don't know what the fuck I would do. Um, oh, man, that's a rough one. Some other fucking guy going in telling your kids to pipe down. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would talk to somebody about this way beyond my fucking educational level. That's what I would do. I hope you get through this thing and, uh, what a fucking mistake she's making. I can tell you that, but she, the, the way you described it, granted, I only get your side of it. She does not sound like the point of person that even when she does fuck it up, she'll admit it. She'll probably still put it on you and, uh. But you know what? It'll all come out in the wash, and your kids are going to know that you're a fucking good guy. So, whoa, geez, can we, can, we, can we end on that? I don't know. I don't think so. Hang on a second. Nia. Okay, my fault. I thought she could come on. Um, she can't. She's got to do mommy duty. I got to have her back on more, man. New job wants to track me. Oh, God. Dear Bill, there's a mandate at my new job that requires my work phone be tracked. This wouldn't be an issue, but on my first day, I had lunch with a guy who was giving his notice at the end of the week. He wasn't too disgruntled. I asked him why he was going to leave, and he he told me with a straight face that the company overstepped some bounds. I love this guy. They overstepped some bounds. I'm out of here. They sent him a gift card for his birthday to a place that he shops at, except he never told anyone he shopped there. And it's a niche store. Yeah. You know what would happen if we all rebelled against that? They would still know that about us. They just wouldn't be dumb enough to send that gift card. He attri- what? How wouldn't they know how fucking creepy that is? He attributed it to them reading all his work emails or, or tracking the browser on his computer. And had no shame in using that info to buy him a birthday gift. It's a huge pay increase, so I think I'll stick it out for a few months because I have bills and student loans. Well, that's how they get you. But I'm going to be very careful about what I say and do. P.S. I'm writing this from a rogue phone with a VPN, so don't worry. I'm not a moron. I think more people need to do that. But then you know what they do? They, they would start their own rogue phone under a different fucking name. They'll get you. They're going to get you. I've given up. I've quit. All right? My only line of defense is to live the most boring life anybody has ever seen. All right? Anybody who's tracking me right now, they're, they're like, wow, this guy's really into watching people power wash driveways. <laughs> um, it's not all that. Uh, pregnant woman's rights. Dear Billy Vanilli. Ice cream sandwich, love and burr. Oh, guilty is fucking charged. Vanilli ice cream. Billy Vanilli ice cream sandwich, love and burr. I like that one. I recently saw a visibly pregnant woman smoking. Hey, man, it's, it's her kid. I couldn't believe with all the information we know about tobacco that this still occurs. So I made a post about it on Facebook talking about how if we can smash a window To get a dog out of a car, why can't we smack the cigarette out of a pregnant woman's mouth? That's fucking hilarious. Oddly, this didn't go well. I know you're being sarcastic. And became a discussion about women's rights to her anatomy. I am pro-choice, but smoking while pregnant should be regarded as child abuse. What are your thoughts on this liberals gone wild moment? I hope you are having a great go fuck yourself. Whatever that means. Um... Well, yeah, dude, if you post something like that on the Internet, you think some fucking morons aren't going to jump on the hook and start yelling at you? I think, it was a, I think it's a great joke. That's what I think. I think it's a really good joke, and I think you should continue doing jokes like that because I think it's funny. And um, I can tell you right now, if men carried the baby and we smoked, a woman would have every right to slap it out of our mouths. If that's my baby too. And they would do it. And you know what? They'd be right. They'd be right. Okay? She's making decisions for someone who doesn't have the ability to make a decision. An unborn child. I mean, Jesus Christ. How do you, I, you know, but as I've learned 
throughout the years that they, they, women are, when you're in a relationship and then you're married and there's a kid and everything, they are number one. They are the starting quarterback. It's them, then the kids, then, you know, whatever the fuck's going on in the house and then you. That's how it fucking works. That's how the pyramid is built. So it doesn't surprise me that a small number of psycho women are arguing that, but I don't believe that most women feel that. And I don't think that people really think you want to go up and slap it out of her mouth. Um, what you should do is get a spray bottle of water and put it on the, the most widest, like, you know, so it hits her in the face too. Oh, what are we doing? Put that out. There's a baby in there. You're welcome. <laughs> Skip away. And you, you just do it with water. You know, water is all natural. Most people are dehydrated. So it's like, and smoking makes you dehydrated. So there you go, right there. Look what I did. See what I did? I saved your baby and hydrated your breast. How could you be that mad at me? I moisturized your face while, you know, helping, helping your unborn baby. Like, what could be the problem? Who knows? All right. That is the podcast, everybody. I'm going to go watch the uh, Red Sox just started playing the devil race. I'm going to record that. I'm going to actually go swimming with my kid. That's what I told her I was going to do, and I have to do it um, because, uh, you know, eventually they're not going to want to do it. That's why, you know, eventually they're going to get, like right now she has a tablet, and that fucking thing is just like, it's really cutting into daddy-daughter time, so... We got to like, you know, dude, you get your kid like any sort of computer or a phone or anything like that. It's like giving a crackhead crack. You immediately have a problem. All of a sudden you can't get them to answer your questions, look at you or anything like that. So I got to make sure I put in the quality time. So that is it, everybody. Um, thank you to everybody that bought tickets to the Wayne Previty uh, benefit slash um, memorial slash uh, reunion I'm very excited to get back there um, and to eat all that delicious food. So I'm going to keep going on the elliptical, elliptical burr. Um, I'm also, you know, lifting the weights, dead, throwing them around. I did the old legs and eggs today. My favorite thing to do. Fucking leg room, dude. I'll tell you, man. The word is out about legs. The leg room, the last couple of times I've gone in there, has been packed. Usually the loneliest part of the room. It's the fucking squat rack and all of that shit. But lately, people have been in there. They're not like the guys I remember back in the day. A squat rack was something to hang your fucking, your fucking champion hoodie on as you benched for the ninth day in the fucking row. All right, that's it, everybody. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday. 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 Okay, real jobs. Hey, Bill, I'm 35. All right? Not old, I'm not young. Just sort of hanging there in limbo. Too old to go to a club. Too young for an AARP card. I used to work in tech. Now I own a diner. I saw you posted something to your Instagram about diners and the dying breed of a local restaurant. Um, oh yeah, there was this whole thing about how um, diners were, uh, during COVID, got, really, got hit really hard. And these guys were talking about what it takes to run a diner, which is really interesting to me because it looks easy, you know, got that flat drop grill going, you know, let me get, let me get, uh, let me get two over easy, uh, two over easy you know, you usually make that, you know how to make, I just didn't realize all the overhead and all of that crap, you know, people chewing and screwing, dining and dashing. Bipping and bopping. Um, I had a very, I have very little experience. Wait a second. Where am I? Okay. It's been a lot of work, but it's very rewarding. Oh, this is something this person does, I guess. I had very little experience, but I sought out knowledge from some veterans of the diner business and they were very happy to help. COVID really destroyed a lot of these businesses. I, is there anything better than a great diner? And what's a great diner? It's clean and they butter the toast. They don't bring the fucking toast over with butter to the side that's cold. And then I got to tear apart the fucking warm bread that you're calling toast. Sorry. I've read that half of all second and third generation diners closed down. Seven out of 
the 10 in my city closed down by the end of 2021, so I believe it. Government didn't do shit for actual small businesses. How did they go out of business when people were ordering food? I guess they weren't ordering from them. Dude, is, is there anything better than going to a fucking diner when you don't have anything to do that morning? You got the, you got the local paper? That's the greatest. And you watch all these people fucking walking in. Hey, Mark. Um, government didn't do shit for actual small businesses. The loans were exploited by big companies and the math never added up in terms of the damage done versus the money they gave out. I really hope uh, another wave of hipsters come back around and start bringing the old stuff back so you have somewhere to drink your root beer float, you dandy. Um, yeah, so do I. Oh, what a surprise. Big companies taking ex- advantage of uh, money being handed out by the government. Oh, yeah. Taking advantage of the bankruptcy laws and that type of shit. That's what rich people do. That's what they do. And then they act like they're one of you. Yes, they do. And then what happens? They fall off a bicycle. You see that there? Little Trump jab, little fucking Joe Biden. Best. Well, it's okay. You want level trashing? Trashing of both sides with no salute? That's what I offer people. I trash both sides and offer no solutions. That's what we do here at the Monday Morning Podcast. Girl used to weigh 300 pounds. Um, all right. Hey, Billy Butt Munch. <laughs> I met this girl who apparently used to weigh 300 pounds. She has lost 100 pounds in a little over a year, so I never saw her at 300. She's 5'10 and still on the high side, but she's, ter- she's determined to keep losing weight. I'm 6'3", 175. Jesus Christ. Bony son of a bitch. And don't really date heavy women. So here's well, you are now. So here's the thing, though. I'm in a two-year rut and 32. I've been trying lately to get myself back out there, and the girl does seem really cool. And I don't really want to wait for her to lose more weight before trying to ramp things up because I'd come across as really shallow. Well, isn't this like shallow hell? This whole fucking uh, email? But I don't want to end up with a fat chick. Yeah, dude, there's nothing wrong with that either. And this whole fucking, you know, women don't want to end up with a fucking loser. You know what I mean? You don't want to end up with a fat chick, you know? Because, you know, you set yourself up for heartache. You're going to fall in love with her, and then she's going to fucking drop of a cardiac arrest at 50. That's the fucking thing about this whole being proud of your body. It's like, uh, you know, okay. I get that, but you realize just because you're proud doesn't mean your 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 fucking you know your vitals are ecstatic about that double cheeseburger you're about ready to eat, and especially if you have kids, you know you got to get the fucking weight off, man, man, man or woman. Um, should I assume she will keep losing weight? Assume she will stay as she is now, or gulp? Should I proceed as if she'll eventually put that weight back on? She has a pretty face and some potential. If possible, I'd love to hear what the lovely Nia thinks. Um, yeah, she's not here right now. She's just celebrating her birthday um, without me, so I need to wrap this up. I, I would... S- I don't do. This is a really weird way to go into a relationship. You're not really saying what you think about her. You're just talking about how she looks. So if you have issues with fat chicks, I wouldn't fucking get involved with one who could potentially become fat again because you're going to break her heart. All right? If you're into her as a person, I would say proceed. All right? Um, and, but if you're not, then I would leave it alone. Simple as that. Simple as that. But I'm looking back here at the shit that you said. She does seem really cool. You're in a rut. I mean, it just sounds like you want to go out and get laid. And you're trying to fuck somebody in the best shape as possible, to be honest with you. Um, if you were trying to get back out there to, you know, think I'm finally ready to settle down and find somebody, you know. You know, unless this chick's getting in shape so she can get a bunch of dick, then maybe you guys are on the same page. I don't know. You guys will have to have that conversation. All right. All right. All right, sister is obese. All right, sister is obese. Dear Freckles, hoping you can offer some advice. My sister is and has always been on the heavy side. Oh, that sucks. But shit has gotten out of hand. If I had to guess, her body fat is easily 40 to 50%. I love her, and I'm struggling to get through to her. Uh, You seem like you never hold back or sugarcoat reality. Um, 
should I do the same in this situation? I don't want to send the poor girl into a whirlwind of emotions, and maybe that's what, she, but maybe that's what she needs. Thanks for the help. Oh, that's a big one, dude. Um, I don't know how old she is. I don't know. I don't know her. Um, yeah, how do you get somebody? How do you tell somebody? How do you tell your sister she's fat? Uh, let me see. Let's let me just improv a couple scenarios here. Hey, sis, how you doing? Did I mention you're overweight? Nah, that's too blunt. What has four limbs and needs to lose 80 pounds? <laughs> it's not good to joke about. Um, I don't know how you do it. Because I don't know how fragile she is, and I wouldn't want her to go more in that direction because nobody wants to. Um, is there a way that you can just start cooking a little more healthy around the house and introduce her or to some stuff or maybe uh, get her to start working out with you maybe just go for a walk or something like that? Um, maybe you just sit down and you have a great talk with her and find out what's going on with her and you don't bring up her weight. Maybe you work on your relationship with her and then she opens up and maybe there's some sort of pain that's causing her to eat like that. I mean, that's like a psychological thing sometimes um, from what I've heard on shows that I've seen where people actually know what they're talking about. So maybe you need to get like, uh, I don't know what your relationship is, but maybe if she feels comfortable opening up to you, um, just ask her what's going on with her, how she doing, how she feeling. Blah, 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 blah. And if she, you know, there's something going on with her, maybe she lets that out. And then maybe she brings it up. And I hate how I look. And then you could be like, well, let's do something about it. You know, maybe try. I would try that way. But I don't think I would bring up that she's fat. I wouldn't do that as much as I made those jokes. But this podcast is supposed to be funny and it's supposed to be fucking ridiculous. So I had to, I had to do a couple. All right. What do you want from me? I'm bald with a big head and I'm on the other side of the fucking golf course. Did you? you it's, it's, it's where I'm at Alright That's the podcast People if you enjoy this podcast And you'd like to donate But not without spending a fucking dime um, Just go to my website BillBird.com Click on the podcast page And just click on the Amazon link Go on Amazon And buy something you don't really fucking need It's not going to cost you any money And I'll get a little bit of credit For driving traffic their way And they'll be like Ah oh, Bill here's a couple of bucks That's it all right, everybody, I'm going to go drink my face off because I'm not an alcoholic. No, I'm going to go do a set. I'm going to go do a set because I'm going to be at Cobb's Comedy Club next Saturday night after uh, I do Kevin Pollock's show. Um, he's going to be interviewing me or whatever. So it's going to be fun. Uh, I love that guy. So I do anything for him, including going up to San Francisco to hang out with him, doing a show. All right, that's it, everybody. Belching here. Uh, I'll check in on you on Thursday. Go fuck yourselves and have a wonderful couple of days. Okay, transgender fan. Hey, all right, look at me crossing over here. Hey, Billy, I've been listening to uh, the podcast since I was 16. I'm 22 now and I've enjoyed every episode, especially during quarantine. I'm a violinist, sculptor, and a trans man. Look at you. Uh, definition in the next paragraph. Thank you. And have been wanting to write in for a while. After hearing you read the letter a fan sent in about his trans friends attending his wedding, I thought now would be the time. Oh, beautiful. All right, let me do the recap. So this guy was um, getting married and not one but two of his friends that he was going to have be groomsmen either had transitioned or were in the process of transitioning. And he was like, am I an asshole if I don't want him to wear a dress? Okay, that was the question. So me knowing nothing about the subject, that didn't stop me from answering it. That's in, the, I believe, the previous or two episodes ago. Um, all right, so now we're going to actually hear from somebody uh, living the life here. First off, I do want to clar clarify that by trans man, I mean I transitioned from female to male. Oh, fuck, okay. I didn't get that. <laughs> I thought trans man meant you went the other way. Okay. In, in, in instrument rating, that would be reverse sensing. 
uh, on a VOR uh, for all you pilots out there. In short, I'm a he. In your response to the fan that wrote in, you said that transitioning seems like a massive emotional process, and you were exactly right. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Not bad for a thith white male. Uh, when I describe the experience, which I do openly, to create a dialogue for people who are generally curious, I often say that transitioning is not an option, but more so the only option for, for most people like me. Let me ask you this. Before you totally committed, was there any doubt like, okay, I, I hope, because, I mean, I hope I'm doing the right, I hope I'm getting this right. Because I can't tell you how many times I've misread my feelings. I mean, it, but the, the stakes were not that high. That's like fucking, you're going all in with the chips, so to speak. Uh, anyway, he goes, imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, ha- and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having, of having 24-7 access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Let me read this again. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are expected to wear heels. All right, now, wait a minute. I thought you transitioned from a woman to a man. I mean, I, mean, I transitioned from female to male. Okay. It says, imagine you wake... Oh, maybe she's, uh, he's putting me in this? I don't know. Imagine you wake up one day with boobs and are, have, and are expected to wear heels. After the novelty of having 24-7 access to tits wears off, it fucking sucks. Nobody chooses to go through all of that trouble of being a lot alienated from friends and family members on a whim. Well, there you go. You just answered my question. For me, if I wanted to have a future post-high school, I had to make this step, and I have avoided a lot of further mental dissonance, dissonance thanks to the scientists and surgeons who advocated for trans medicine. And yes, I will always trust the opinions of a scientist over a politician. Fair enough. As the wedding scenario goes, I can guarantee his trans grooms were just as conflicted as him. I also came out right before a relative's wedding and was given an ultimatum of, you either lie about your identity if you want to remain a part of this family or you won't be welcomed back into our lives. That is just fucking, can you imagine your family saying that to you? I ended up playing violin at their ceremony for free and never getting invited to another family reunion. Wow. That is really fucking sad. I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jesus, in the near future, that doesn't happen. How do you disown a fucking, your own kid? I, d- I don't get that. I don't get that. I mean, I draw the line of, you know, hearing my kid leave and then getting charged with the, at night and covering for a murder. <laughs> I mean, there are lines. Um, yeah, you do some dateline shit, you know. Uh, I mean, you're kind of out on your own. But I'd still visit you when you went to jail and I would be like, where did I fuck up that made you do something like that? Um, anyway, personally, if I were asked to be a bridesmaid before coming out as a guy, I would, I would have stepped down because I don't want to be the one guy in a traditional, traditionally female role. I'm betting this guy's trans grooms people felt similar. I have to fucking do the math on that. I would have stepped down because I don't want to be the one guy in a traditionally female role. Uh, I don't know what that means. I'm betting this guy's trans groups, people felt the sim- similarly. I hope you guys understood what that meant. I didn't get that one sentence. Okay, and here's where the rant opens up. All right, here we go. Taking the gloves off there. All right, a lot of trans people are, are, are really pissed by the false and performative allyship the far left has dumped on us with little work to back their claims up. Yeah, it's a fucking show. That's what I think so much of that liberal social justice fucking horseshit is. It's just for you to put on a little performance on your social media page. And people can be like, oh, wow, you're an ally. Here's your little rainbow fucking emoji. And then you can just go back to living your life and you're not getting your hands dirty. Um, It's like those white people that marched with Black Lives Matter as they were live Instagramming themselves. Like, look at me. I have a bandana on. I'm a fucking revolutionary. And then after that, they just went back to their life. (laughs) Got CrossFit in the morning. Um, We are identifying more as independents because we've experienced hate from the right and tokenism from the left. 
Oh, yeah, you get used. I mean, which is worse? At least, I mean, I know the hate, if it escalates to violence, is bad. But at least if somebody just straight up says how they feel about you, as opposed to just using you. Um, anyway, I think a lot of your jokes about trans people are actually more about performative cis people. I don't know what cis means. Who are using trans issues for votes because they know we are a very vulnerable group. Uh, well, they kind of do that with everybody. I guess that's the only positive way. To, politicians always do that. They're always fucking looking for some fucking angle <coughs> for themselves. Anyway, but not all of them. They're not all bad. There's got to be some good ones in there. Trans people just want to live a normal life, start a family, and not be claimed as a political pawn. I was at my lowest depression before I started hormones and got my chest masculiz- masculiz- masculinization procedure. What chest did you go with? Can, can, are they good enough that you can pick one out? Because personally speaking, uh, you know, I would, I would go fucking Matthew McConaughey. Um, but here's the thing. You know what's funny is if they actually get it down someday where you could do that, all of these fucking people who are like anti-trans and all of that shit, if they find out that you can actually get a Matthew McConaughey chest and they're looking at their fucking man tits, they might do it. You know? I got the McConaughey. You know? You know, right before they fucking put the fucking gas on your face, you have headphones. And the last thing you hear is Matthew McConaughey going, all right, all right, all right. (laughs) And you wake up with a chiseled, tan chest. Um, that'd be fucking hilarious if I did that as a redhead and my chest didn't match my, the whiteness of my head. Then I have to go reverse Michael Jackson, you know, and do a reverse bleaching. Um, anyway, let's not make this about you, Bill. Anyway, he says, uh, sh- he says uh, I haven't left the house in weeks. I haven't left the house in weeks and nearly dropped out of school. Since transitioning, I'm happy, back on stage, volunteering, writing music. That's great. Teaching violin students, running my small business. There you go. Don't work for somebody else. And I have have met someone special. Oh, look at you. I know I'm from an outside perspective being trans. I know from an outside perspective being trans seems crazy. If you knew the thunder and lightning between my fucking ears, I don't think anybody's crazy. I think it's fucking crazy to uh, go through life and not think that you're kind of fucking nuts yourself. You know, walking around thinking you have it all figured out. I think that that's fucking crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you know, like shit freaks me out without a doubt. I'm not saying this shit, but I will tell you when, when Bruce became Caitlin, there was definitely, you know, a what the fuck moment. Now I'm used to it. But what was weird about that was if you were like me, you weren't for some reason allowed to have that what the fuck moment, um, which is one of those things that the left is like psychotic with. It's like you you, you got you got to let everybody kind of go through their emotions as long as they're not hurting anybody. They're pr- you're processing it. That's all right. So anyway, this person says I felt the same way until I realized I would always be angry be an angry, sad person if I had stayed in the closet. I started listening to your podcast the same month I came out back in 2017 and have not been offended by the jokes about trans people. Contrary to what the far left or right wants you to think, trans folk have a pretty thick skin and we're no strangers to having having to advocate for our rights. I've been doing a lot of work on undoing the anger I built up over my teenage years and listening to your show has given me laughs when I needed them the most. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Wasn't that great? Look at me, huh? I'm going to make that whole fucking thing about me. You know, the appeal of me is just really amazing. And you guys, I just want to say, as a podcast justice warrior... um, All right, so if anybody is listening to this and your kid is gay and they came out and you disowned them, can can you not do that to them? That's such a fucking horrible... Horrible thing to do to somebody. Um, it really is. It really is. It's like, you know, just try to be, uh, you know, just fucking work your way through it. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. 
that happens to me with one of my kids. I mean, it's you just be who the fuck you are and don't be a fucking asshole to other people. That's all I ask. Can you just do that? Great. All right. All right. Advice for a young lady. Hey, Billington. Um, very, very original ones this, this, this week. People coming up with different ways to butcher my name. I'm, I'm enjoying these. I am in need of some advice for a young lady. I, and I love that some women are actually piping in, despite the fact how much I talk about hockey on this podcast. What are you saying? Women don't like hockey? Yes, this is what I'm saying. Um, I'm an 18-year-old high school senior entering my freshman year of college. I got into my dream school with a scholarship. Ah, do you know how bad I wish that I did that? Wish I studied in high school. Anyways, and I'm moving out of my shithole town and everything finally, finally seems to be making up for all the shit that I went through in high school. One of my really good friends is going to the same university as I am and we're renting an apartment together. However... My friend is an 18-year-old straight guy, and I am a straight girl. Uh Uh-oh. The gender thing could add a whole other level of difficulty on top of adjusting to living with a new person in a new city, uh, away from everything I grew up around. We've been friends practically since we were in diapers. We can talk, jam out to 70s rock, and watch the Chappelle show for hours, and we've never had issues with weirdness before. But I do understand that college introduces a lot of firsts. And I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous that a few too many. Oh, having a few too many drinks during a welcome weekend could lead to some inappropriateness. Weirder things. Weirder things have happened. Um, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize our nearly two decade long friendship. So this kind of sounds like you're a little attracted to this guy. If you're this worried that something's going to happen. Or maybe you are, you're 18, you're going from your parents' house to all of a sudden living with the guy. Maybe that's what it is. I'm going to guess that that's what it is. So anyway, so my question. What tips do you have to stop anyone from stepping over the line with the male slash female roommate? Also, in general, what tips do you have for living with a roommate? Nia's opinion on this would be epic. Thanks and fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that was Nia's great fuck you last week. Um, you know what? Maybe this Wednesday I will do another neolog and I'll read this one. But right now I'll just give you my own ignorant um, thought on it. Oh, wait, wait. By the way, there's there's a PS to this, everybody. There's an epilogue, just like the streets of San Francisco. PS, might I add that we've both been in various relationships while friends. He often asks me for girl advice and I ask him for guy advice. He currently has a girlfriend who I really like and am friends with. But they are breaking up in June when she leaves to study abroad. I am currently single. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to bang within fucking eight minutes. Within eight minutes of your of your, your college career. Um, all right. So basically what you want to do. You're not asking me should you or should you not move in with this guy. You're going to move in with this guy. So... Um, what you're really saying is basically, how do I not fuck this guy? Well, I can only do it from the male perspective, which is what I would do is every morning before I ever even walked out into the living room was I would rub one out <laughs> oh, God. to try to get that fucking, you know, urge out of me. I think what you need to do is sit down and talk with the guy and just say, listen, we have a great friendship, but I don't want to ruin this. I know we're moving in together and everything, but, um, you know, obviously we're going to be in close quarters, you know, sharing a bathroom and blah, 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 blah. You, you know what you have to do? You have to lay down the law if that's what you really want to do. But if you actually like this guy, like I think you might, um, if you actually like him, like him, and think you could actually, did I just say that? If you like, like I mean, like, like him, like him, like him, do you know what I mean? Do you? Oh, my God, you guys. This could be the one. Um, 
If you actually like this dude like that, then you should not move in with him. You should be in a separate apartment. And uh, that way, if you start dating him, you don't immediately start by living with one another. You know, 